Hey, Ron here from Military Images with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I was thinking about the upcoming Memorial Day, or those of us who are students of the Civil War know it as Decoration Day. The first officially recognized Decoration Day was May 30th, 1868. So I thought I would take a look back at newspapers from that time period just to get a sense of how those early celebrations took place. Part of my thinking was maybe I'll find out some of the early traditions as the citizens of various communities across the nation were figuring out how to best commemorate the losses of their townspeople. This was still so very new. The war had just ended three years earlier, and there was a lot of grieving going on, a lot of loss going on, still loss going on for those who had suffered not only physical injuries, but mental injuries. So how did those early commemorations take place? I'm also thinking about the Victorian traditions of the time, the mourning practices that were in place. So I picked out a few newspaper articles just to give you some sense of what was going on in different parts of the country. So let me read a couple of these passages to you. I want to start with the Hartford Current. They state, this is what they have to say. We give a large portion of our space this morning to accounts of Decoration Day in this and other places. The Grand Army of the Republic has done well to inaugurate this beautiful custom. Thanks to the exertions of this widespread organization, the observance of the day was well nigh universal, and the patriotic people of the nation have flocked in sacred pilgrimage to the graves of those who gave their lives that the Republic might live. The same womanly hands which labored patiently to alleviate the sufferings of the soldiers during the war, fashion the wreaths and garlands and place them in the hands of the living heroes that their dead comrades might be fittingly honored. Decoration Day, we are sure, will hereafter be the most sacredly and universally observed of the national holidays. Definitely prescient. Here's another, call it a tidbit of Decoration Day, an event, uh, a way of celebrating, reported in the Carbondale Advance at that of Carbondale, Pennsylvania. In Ashland, Ohio, this brief report says, on Decoration Day, young ladies stood with wreaths and flowers at every soldier's grave in the cemetery. And at the signal of the drum, all dropped at the same instant, the floral tribute of affection on the graves. Wow, that's visually to think about young women throughout the cemetery. It doesn't say what they wore, but I'm willing to bet they were dressed in some similar clothing. You know, white was fairly popular at that time to mark liberty, Lady Liberty and all that. So imagine him standing with wreaths and the drum is beating, they're silently standing at the graves, and then they drop the tribute, the wreath on the grave. Pretty powerful stuff. Here's another one, an interesting one from the Illinois State Journal in Springfield, titled Decoration Day. And here we go. We have already published the suggestion of the Indianapolis Journal that on Egg Decoration Day, each person shall, in addition to wreaths and garlands, take some live plant or shrub and plant it on a grave, thus erecting a monument to the dead, which will, may, will remain fresh and beautiful until the summer is ended. The suggestion is one which may well be considered by all who have sacred graves, whether they be of soldiers or not. In this connection, another suggestion is proposed, and it is this. Let the citizens of every section of the state who intend to participate in the ceremony of decoration determine without further delay upon the day, whether Saturday the 29th or Sunday the 30th, 
on which the decoration of the graves shall take place. We believe it is conceded that either day may be chosen. It would, perhaps, be better that the celebration should be upon the same day everywhere, but as this is not likely to be the case, it is advisable that one or the other of the days mentioned should be adopted by the people of each section at once, so that there may be no misapprehension or confusion. So there they are. They haven't really figured out which day to celebrate. And that could also maybe have to do with communications, with travel, not exactly sure, but an interesting tidbit in the early development of the holiday. Now, here's one uh, from the Southern perspective in the Louisville Daily Courier, and that's in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it's a short, it's a news brief. Again, this is like the Indianapolis paper titled Decoration Day. As the 26th comes on Sunday this year, the ladies have, we are requested to say, determined to meet at Cave Hill on Saturday afternoon at four o'clock for the purpose of decorating the Confederate graves with flowers and evergreens. They request their friends in the country to send them on Saturday all the flowers they may be able to spare. So here's the Confederate Decoration Day following a similar uh, routine as the Union Decoration Day. And here's the last one I want to share with you. This comes from the Livingston Journal in Livingston, Alabama, and they're reporting about a curious event that occurred or reported to have occurred in Lafayette, Indiana. And here's the report. At Lafayette, Indiana on Decoration Day, a sensation was created on the receipt by the Committee of Arrangements of this note from a 10-year-old. It's addressed to Colonel Leeming, who was one of the commanders of the regiments. Will you please put this wreath upon some rebel soldier's grave? My dear Papa is buried at Andersonville, and perhaps some little girl will be kind enough to put a few flowers upon his grave. Signed, Jenny Vernon. There's an addendum. The wreath was deposited upon the grave of an unknown Confederate soldier, the only one remaining in the cemetery. God bless little Jenny. So there you have it, some news reports from 1868, marking the first Decoration Day, later to become, as we know it today, Memorial Day. As you can see, I hope you can see, townspeople from across the nation are trying to figure out how to celebrate. Pretty common that a visit, or I should say, a through line through all these stories is a visit to a cemetery, the commemoration over the graves of the fallen with some sort of floral or greenery. How they did that, when they did that, was still something that was being figured out. And there was variety, which makes sense considering it was a new way to remember the fall and from the Civil War. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode.